It's a very mystical story. A young boy's rite of passage. An intimate family story played out in an epic world. What was father like? Never forget how much he loved you, Kubo. Kubo and the Two Strings feels like it's this incredible, rich experience for a variety of reasons. But the very clearest reason is that there's monsters in it. The monsters in Kubo are obviously a pretty major and exciting part of the film. <laughs> what they highlighted was scale. They were all enormous creatures. We certainly hadn't done that before, and I think the scale of it has never been done before. But the biggest one was our giant skeleton monster in the Hall of Bones. Hey! I've got a bone to pick with you. See, because he's made of bones. You're an embarrassment. In our world, it would be a 100-foot monster. At first, I was fairly nervous and a little bit scared. No one has animated a puppet this large before. If he was assembled, this skeleton couldn't actually fit in this building. Kubo! The monsters in Kubo really did push the boundaries of puppet making and technology. One of the biggest monsters that I had to deal with on this film was the undersea creature. Um, what kind of something? She said there was a garden of eyes. The garden of eyes? Garden of eyes are these outrageous giant eyeballs on stocks. There was a lot of talk at the beginning of it of what scale it should be. In the end, it was a, uh, what they put bingo balls in. And once we had decided that the eyeball had to be this big, well, that meant that the entire creature had to be eight feet tall. OK. And then our motion control department went one step further, and they developed an encoder system that pick up the coordinates of a bowling ball. It's definitely the most eye-popping thing we've ever done. If the story is going to work, the villains have to be believably dangerous and terrifying. Well, Kubo's scariest monster would have to be the Moon Beast. I think the Moon Beast is, is the most terrifying. He's really based on a prehistoric fish that really existed. That always freaked me out. Stop Motion has a great legacy of bringing creatures to life. We're still carrying on that kind of legacy. Ours are definitely kind of the next generation. <laughs> In a way, it's like an homage, I think, to the old stop motion monsters. But ours are better. The story was so good, we wanted to really support it and make it feel like an adventure for everybody. <laughs> <laughs>